Uh, and yes, and now we have Jarvis Ka, who is enterprise architect at Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance in the U.S. And it will be about how to position the API-driven architecture to support the digital transformation, the link between business goals and architecture and how to do it internally. So uh, I would love to have Jarvis on stage. Hello, Jarvis. How are you? Hello. How are you? Can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Everything okay? Yeah, so far, perfect. Full HD. A uh, nice picture of a beautiful park landscape. So, okay. uh, yeah, Great. the stage is yours for 20 minutes. Thank Great, you, Jarvis. Thank you. Well, um, hello, good afternoon, London. Uh, here's in the morning uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana. So, today I'm glad to share with you about how to position the API driven architecture to support digital transformation. So, I think uh, in this time of the year, you mostly have your thick jacket on, sweater on, because the seasons are changing. Unfortunately, the summer is mostly gone. Uh, so seasonal transformation is a beautiful and wonderful thing. Uh, the nature understand it's important to adapt to the surroundings in order to grow and survive. So there's actually no difference in terms of business. Uh, to run any business nowadays or any time, you have to learn how to grow and adapt to survive. So this is this term called digital transformation. You probably hear that from many places and the footprint of the digital transformation is actually everywhere. Now in this uh, conference, we, do, we are in the banking and insurance and I'm from an insurance company for a long time. So you will see a lot of the footprint about digital transformation. Now payment processing, unfortunately for some of the smaller insurance carrier it's still not quite mainstream yet, but the payment processing is there, transformation, confirmation, transaction confirmation, reconciliation. Many of these things are there, especially nowadays we want to have a better and more seamless way to process the payment. Many of those vendors are out there. But how all these things can, um, can enable is mostly all through APIs. And then nowadays, a lot of time we talk about the customer journey through the whole life cycle of the insurance uh, business from a uh, lead prospect to a customer to uh, billing to claims to uh, renewal. All this first step, all this life cycle, we want to do provide more of a uh, customer handholding. Real-time tax is something that we have been looking to heavily and introducing. And most of these things are also being enabled by the API uh, with companies like Trilio and stuff like that. And then when you're in the insurance business and you definitely uh, look into this thing on demand insurance, especially with the COVID, the driving parents not quite like uh, before. Many insurance carriers are looking into the on-demand insurance to provide real-time, uh, find a way to get a real-time data from the connected vehicles. And then furthermore, we can offer a reward for a safe driver and those kind of things. But how all these things uh, enable and make it happen. It's all through APIs on the back end. So in terms of insurance, we have to deal with this thing called claims. We have to honor our promise to our uh, customer. So in the past, uh, many insurance carriers, including us, we climbed the roof to look into the rooftop for the hail damage or whatnot. But we have been moving along the way to use um, drones or even cellular imagery with some of the partners that we have for claims and sometimes even for underwriting process. Especially if we're doing the farm insurance, sometimes it's uh, pretty um, difficult or tedious to cover a large landscape of the farmland and stuff like that. So with drones and those kind of things, it makes things so much more efficient and safer and more cost effective. But how all those things happen? APIs behind the scene and gluing all those things together. So the other thing, just another evidence of this digital transformation with using the API is a lot of the insurance carrier starting to provide public APIs, meaning they can participate in some insurance comparison portal so that they can uh, get their name out, get the opportunities out to um, approach more wider audience. And some insurance carrier even venture into different industry uh, through APIs to try to get more leads and get more business to send into company. But how all these things happen is all through APIs and integration. So when we talk about all this kind of uh, digital transformation, many of these things for many audience here is not new. These are the same talk for years. 
But what is really driving this thing is that your CIO, CTO, CMO, mostly is the COVID. In the past few years, uh, with this COVID situation, it really kicked the digital transformation and customer experience really into another level. And we have noticed that not just with our company and also with a lot of the um, partner companies that we see this trend just, just very aggressively trying to look for a better way to provide uh, customer service through the digital channels. But if we talk about API as such an important thing to enable this dig enable the digital transformation, but then I want to call something is that for many companies that you are already in the mature stage, which is good, you already uh, you probably know many of this mindset already. But for some newer uh, insurance carrier want to get into this journey, I want to caution one thing is that to implement this thing called API is not a project. Typical project has a start day and end day. For API, it's a movement, it's a journey, it's a program. It doesn't quite have an end day. It's a continuous cycle to continue to uh, elevate to the next level. Once you get into this game, there's, uh, there's no end day there. So what about mindset? The other important mindset is this thing called API-driven architecture. Now, API, as I mentioned briefly earlier, is that it's a glue to glue many components together internally, also externally. And many companies will use the, like us, will use the API to create an abstraction layer for our core policy systems. Many of our insurance carriers are using some uh, dated or old or even mainframe or even homegrown mainframe system as the core policy system to enable the customer interaction nowadays, there's no other way around. You have to find a way to create an abstraction layer to enable the seamless uh, integration. So API also serves as an abstraction layer and at the end it's a decoupler to provide very flexible architecture. So overall API, you, we should have a mindset that it should be the center of your architecture. Uh, to move forward. So in this particular uh, talk here, I would like to provide uh, or share six things with you. Hopefully at the end of this uh, talk here, at least you remember these six items, you can go back to think about it to see what you can do. Maybe you already have done some of these things semi-informally, uh, uh, but maybe hopefully this talk can get you a little bit more spark to think about a little bit more about, oh, we should really look into these six items here. Hopefully that I can deliver this message here. So the first one <coughs> is this thing called the API product owner. Um, for our experience, we have been using this thing called web services or SOAP-based service uh, more than 10 years ago and evolved, transformed into some XML-based uh, um, web service uh, over HTTP, HTTPS, and then we we'll move transform into the RESTful APIs uh, using uh, JSON as a data structure. So through all this over 10, 15 years experience that we, we've been uh, doing, you call that used to call surface-oriented architecture, now it's API-driven architecture. The important thing we, under, uh, we observe through our experience is that there, are, there will be many teams that will be creating APIs so if we don't have a um, coordinated effort, I'll talk about in the next few points. So it's important that we have an API product owner because API at the end is promote reusability. At the end, if we have five versions of the same API doing a similar thing, you are defeating the purpose. API should be the glue, should be abstraction layer, but it should be common, should be shareable, should be reusable. So it's a critical to have a product owner. Uh, if nobody owns it, then everybody owns it. If everybody owns it and nobody owns it. So that's the important thing we feel like we need to have some project level control for all the APIs uh, through a product owner. And then you get into the next point about the product development team. We used to develop uh, services and API through different teams, through different system development team and application teams. And we learned fairly quickly about a few years into that journey is that for any common and reusable API, it's very critical to have a API development team that centralizes all those development, coupling with the a API product owner to decide the, the overall movement, direction, priority, and have the API uh, 
own uh, product owner to work with all the different stakeholders that request the same common function and feature for the APIs. And then eventually you can build up the API libraries. <clears throat> but in order to do that, it's critical to have an API development team or centralized API development teams for all the reusable APIs. For the non-reusable APIs, it's okay to be maintained by the project teams. Those are very um, specific APIs which may not quite have the need to be centralized. So that's the second point I'd like to mention is that the API development teams is a critical aspect for that. So with an API product owner, API development team, the next important thing is to have an API roadmap. And we are getting to a maturity level is that many application teams are looking for reusing APIs instead of reinventing the wheel and create their own APIs and stuff like that, which is a great thing. But the drawback of that is that uh, the demand, the priority become higher and because have more pressure to decentralize API development team. So it's critical that the product owner, API development team work with all the teams to come up with an API roadmap and maintain and manage by the API product owner. So all the different teams, they can have a visual way to see what are the current API for all the API endpoints, what they can do right now, what are the current versions, and what are the roadmap, what will be the next release coming up, and what are the uh, added uh, data set or features or function that will be providing. So from the application, team standpoint, they can come to this centralized place to see what else is coming so they can help to facilitate the project planning and uh, application design. So they also help as a um, channel for people to negotiate, to argue, or to uh, figure out what's the priority. Uh, if five different teams all want to enhance this client API or this policy APIs, then we can all work together to figure out what's the best way to maybe to reorganize the priority or the, or the future roadmap together. If not, the situation we get to the next point is that API can grow like wild forest. Uh, if you don't manage and control that, we have seen that in the past, that's another reason we created centralized API teams. When especially when you have a multi-region company, a fairly large corporation, the, 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 the dangers of having the similar API doing the similar things is very um, real. So an overall API roadmap and architecture is needed to oversee the whole API ecosystem to achieve the long-term reusability. So the number four item here I'd like to share with, with you is that be, be on a watch out or look out for the API growth. Once the company reach to a certain maturity, the APIs will grow really rapidly. If we don't have a control structure and format, it's gonna be very dangerous. So that leads to the next point about a standard and guidelines. One thing I'd like to point out is that don't underestimate the flexibility of the RESTful APIs. Um, you think that typically, okay, there's a RESTful API using the HTTP standard and put and de uh, delete posts, and those are simple, as standard. But when you get into real world implementation, there are many ways to interpret those standards. Um, when should you use a post, but should you use a push, should you use a delete, and there are so many different uh, ways to interpret this thing. So the recommendation that I'd like to share with you is to find a standard out there. Um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are many standard and API standard and guidelines out there. Find something that's closely aligned with your company's philosophy and development standard, and then adopt that, and then continue to revise and enhance that. We have tried something before, so we try to come up with our own standard based on our own understanding or whatnot, but it become a pretty tedious process, which is um, eventually feel like we should not reinvent the wheel. We should just adopt something. But it's very important to have a standard and guidelines to guide the centralized API development teams and all the other API development teams. You, you want to, at the end, want to have a holistic API ecosystem where the consumer, either internally or externally, when they consume your API, they can have a... Um, consistent expectation, they know what they are uh, getting with those API. So standard and guidelines is important. The next thing is the um, API and data governance. 
the JSON data structure within the API is nothing but data. We're just passing data back and forth, add on some transaction process along the way. And as you all know, data is the new oil. So that, therefore, the data need to be managed and governed. The key here is that we have spent a lot of the time to try to design a reusable data structure in JSON for all of our insurance uh, line of business and processes and transactions. We look into a core XML, try to get some inspiration from them, and we also look into some industrial standard. But at the end, we feel like we, we find, need to find a mixture of those two to define what's the best way that's suiting our company, our maturity level and whatnot. So through that process, we work with our data um, governance team because at the end, the data in the XML, we need to have data dictionary, we need to have data definition. If, if not, it will be pretty um, easy to be misinterpreted. And if we don't have those standards and, and guidelines for, from a data standpoint, the consumption of those API become more difficult. And also from an API, uh, future development standpoint, it will be very beneficial that all the developers have a set of reference for the data for those uh, within the data uh, within the API uh, data structure. So this is the last point I'd like to share with you is that the data governance and API needs to go in together. They, they, they cannot quite separate from each other. So just try to have a little conclusion here. Product owner, centralized development team, an API roadmap, API architecture, standard guidelines, and data governance. These are the six things that can largely help to position your API-driven architecture at the end can power the digital transformation. Digital transformation will not need to happen from within first. Within the company, within the development process and structure and guidelines and architecture need to be strong and agile before we can become fully agile to, to to feel the customer need and we add to it. But just one more thing uh, is that we are, I always believe that we are smarter than me. In our journey into this API and web service process, we always find a way to discover the hidden talent. Uh, there are people that just really just didn't have the chance to really work on to this and work in this area. So be ready to work with many different people. And when you design and di discuss the API, data structure, the the, the restful path and those things, be ready to disagree because we all have different mindset, different mental framework, and we, we all will come with different viewpoints. So be ready to work together with many different teams to come up with the best structure for your own company. So last but not all, <laughs> seasonal transformation is a beautiful thing. So the nature understands the importance of it. So we need to prepare ourselves you know, by the right type of clothing for the winter to come. So if we want to do a lot of the digital transformation, we got pushed by the COVID, pushed by all the different aspects. The core basic to push the digital transformation is through APIs. Uh, you cannot quite avoid that, but in order to really launch a successful API um, uh, structure and infrastructure and architecture, I hope this sixth thing will help you to think of something and maybe go back to uh, your workplace tomorrow after this conference to think about, okay, what are these six things? How can they apply to our situation? Or maybe you can think of some other thing too, but these are the six things that we would like to summarize through our years of the experience into this web service or API journeys here. So that's all I have. Maybe I bet to uh, you. Very much. We have a few questions from the audience. Uh, I would just ask the first one, uh, if you allow me. Um, there is a great quote from, I think, Ralph Waldo Emerson, who is, adopt the pace of nature. Her secret is patience. Patience, right? You know, uh, so, uh, and you put a lot of pictures of beautiful nature um, about, about this. And it seems as an architect, your role is to understand the past, the present and the future. How long it take to make it uh, to make it well? Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Patient is a very important thing for the, for this whole effort here. It's 
a lot of times depends on your company culture, whether you have a very um, forward driven, very aggressive driven CIO, CEO to drive this, this thing, or whether your company is more reserved as uh, if, if you're a mutual company or non-for-profit company, maybe the bottom line is not that important. Well, it's important, don't, don't never say that's not important, but it's all depends on the company um, motive. In our experience, it's a years of endeavor. You really need to have a lot of patience because Especially one thing we'd like to uh, suggest is that try to get as many up level, upper level and director or C-level people understand the importance of this API. That will really help to um, push forward this thing a lot faster. In the past, we have been trying from the bottom-up approach, mid-level manager approach. It got some movement going on, but it's never until we get the director and C-level uh, understanding of the overall picture, things moving a lot faster. Like what I mentioned about creating a centralized API team, that's organization uh, change. Uh, that really require a lot of the up-level people to understand this importance and then uh, articulate the, the, the reason why we have to do this, do stuff like this. So, but along the way, depends on your company culture, you need to have a lot of patience. Yes, we have a question also from Ibrahim about, uh, could you give us an example of an example customer agency that you could see in the next five years? You mean customer urgency? Agency, agency. You were, I think it oh. was. Okay, the urgency to implement. A agency, APIs. sorry, agency. Like for insurance, for insurance, you know, like uh, the agency where you, you know, like oh, branch. Agency. branch. Okay. Okay, the agency, the independent agent or captive yeah. agent, that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, yes, um, we as a Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we are mostly as a captive agent business. But I can see a lot of the trend is that we're moving towards the independent agent model. Uh, API become even more critical because when you want to expand into independent agent channel, you don't want them to just log into your core policy system and see all of your other agents, book of business and information like that. So it's important to create those abstraction layer. And sometimes you can even build a portal or maybe leverage like CRM portal to, to hook into your, your resources in the back end. So APIs is also powering those kind of movement from uh, moving towards into independent agency models. Um, so we see a lot of movement in the area there. Do you do? Would you say that in terms of distribution, API open APIs are the new brokers? You know, as they 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 redistribute your value or agent, but they redistribute your value proposition. Maybe taking a cut and losing the the relationship with the end user, but still delivering your product. It is definitely a very interesting proposition. I think it largely depends on the company um, business uh, belief and uh, marketing uh, strategies. I definitely can see there's a lot of great uh, benefit of doing this kind of thing. Like, like I mentioned a little bit earlier too, those public APIs is a great way to leverage API to expose your business to many different channels that you don't quite have access to in the past. Uh, but all those kind of things really have to get the business involved and buy in. API is not just a techie term. Uh, once you get into a maturity level, API can enable a lot of business and you really have to tap the business into the overall uh, strategy movement and planning. Yeah, yeah, I think the question is also about the fact that our, about agents or brokers, they own the customer relationship, they own the customer experience, but they represent your value proposition and your products to, to the customer and they often take a cut. With an API, it's approximately the same thing. You know, the capability is there, but it's the end, the end developer who integrates it in the last mile to the user in the yes. final application that, that represents its value. So does managing brokers will teach insurers how to manage API and developer experience? Yes, it is. Uh, we have seen some use case where um, the, the insurance carrier exposed some APIs for quoting. And then a developer of an app like a skateboard company or whatnot, they, within the app, they even promote this insurance company's API that, hey, you, you bought a new skateboard, would you like to uh, add on to your, uh, get a quote or something like that. So there's a many different possibility to leverage this API to increase sales, increase awareness, or increase the brand 
of your company. But you're, you're right, that, that really changed the dynamic, right? Because used to be agent base and the agent commission. Now it's a developer base. It really changed the, the game to some degree. But I think this kind of movement, uh, in my assessment, it is not quite there for many insurance carrier. Uh, it just uh, unless you have you're very progressive, um, new insurance tech that kind of startup, then we'll mostly focus on this kind of uh, area. But again, this thing, uh, maybe the last takeaway is that ins APIs has to get to some maturity level to tie the business together, to explore all the possible possibility, how to enhance business, create new opportunities using APIs. It's not just a techie term here. Perfect, Jarvis. That was a great ending. Thank you very much for being there again at API Days conferences. We'd love to have you at other conferences and always like keeping the pace of nature as patients. We, we understand that it's important. Thank you very much, uh, Jarvis. Thank you so much. Stay warm.